All right, everybody, welcome back to another Kuro no Kiseki news video. So this is looking like our last character update video as the final couple panels have been filled out. So let's go check it out, see what we got. And once again, the translation that I'll be reading, it'll be courtesy of Gamatsu. So if you want to read that yourself, I'll drop a link in the description. And first up, we have Ren Bright. This should be no surprise to those of you who are already familiar with Trails of the Reverie. This one is 100% expected. It was just a matter of time until they finally showed her. But let's just go over what we got. So in this game, she's age 17. And uh, quote is, as school council president, this is an easy task, especially for my juniors. She is a second year exchange student who attends RMS High School. She's the invincible president of the school council who can handle any kind of situation with ease. She used an exchange student program from Liberal's Janice Royal Academy to come to the Republic in the spring of year 1208. She met Agnes immediately after she came to the Republic and since their rooms are right next to each other under the dorms, they have naturally become close. Although she is making impressive results as student council president, she seems to have a different reason for coming to the Republic. I really love the artwork of Ren here because I think it really just captures her personality really well. And I think a lot of us are just super excited to see an older Ren, right? Because we've literally just watched her grow up from such a little girl to who she is now. It's like we feel like proud parents just watching her grow up, right? Really cool, really neat. And second, we have Yin, age 21. I will follow through with my way for my past home and my home now. She is a legendary assassin nicknamed the Shadow of the Easterner Quarter. She always has her face covered with a mask and wields a demon slaying sword larger than her own body. She used to have a contract between the Heiwe and operate mainly in the Easterner Quarter, but changed her base of action to Crossbell as of a few years ago, which made any rumors about her fade away. She has been away from Calvin for long, but has once again signed a contract with Heiwe to stop any damage to the Easterner Quarter caused by the Mafia organization Armada. Okay, so due to Yin's ties to Calvary, you know, a lot of us definitely suspected she, there's a very good likelihood of her appearing in the game. So I guess this finally confirms it, Yin for Kuro no Kiseki. Definitely hype, super excited to see her in the new engine. Can't wait. And third on the list, we have Elroy Harwood, who is now confirmed to be voiced by Takaya Kuroda. Now, he's also the voice of our beloved Kazuma Kiryu-chan. Can't wait. And it's also kind of funny that they are also very similar in age as well, which is kind of cool. But don't make me say it. Of course, it's because it'll be more interesting. Anguish number four of Ouroboros, who crowns the title of the Thousand Oathbreaker. He uses a mysterious power that can rot away even demons in purgatory. Like Lucretia, the Golden Butterfly, he was also part of an assassin's organization known as Order of the Moonlight Horse. After fighting with Ouroboros, Harwood decided to join them and was given the role of Anguish by the Grandmaster. Having studied and practiced the evil deeds of all ages and places, he is a criminal specialist who acts according to his own desires. But it is said that a certain plan of Ouroboros is related to his movements within the Republic. I know this is a bit weird of me to say, but I've been going through the Yakuza series throughout all this year. And I'm pretty sure when I finally hear him in game, I'll think of nothing but Kiryu. <laughs> every time he speaks so i feel like my mind is just connected to him now but anyways really cool and fourth and the final character reveal we have gerard dantes voiced by tomokazu seki age 35 what's the matter spriggan is that all to your nightmare and this is the big bad boss of the mafia organization armada he commands an overwhelming aura that feels as if he can make anyone obey him Gerard made the organization what it is now by killing his former boss Enrique, and the boss mishandled some matters. He thinks fear is what makes people human, and that everything can be, can be controlled by it. He gained many followers by recruiting strong fighters that resonate with his philosophy. Other organizations in the Republic have caught on to Armada's suspicious behavior, and already started to take countermeasures such as the Bracer Guild, the police, and even underground organizations like Heiwei. Anyways, that's it for the final couple character reveals. I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. But there should be another showcase of the game closer to the end of the month. And it's very likely that we'll finally see the opening of the game. As well as some more combat gameplay. More specifically, you know, all the S-Crafts and all that. I don't think we're going to get much else in between now and then. But definitely look forward to that when that comes out. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Also consider subscribing as it would definitely help me out a lot. That being said, I'll see you guys next time.